You and I, we both spend a lot of time in email. So anything that we can do to streamline the process inside of email is well worth learning about. Don't you think? I think so. So today we are going to take a look at my top 10 tips and tricks inside of Gmail. That's here on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? And as promised, today we're going to dive in and discover my top 10 Gmail tips and tricks. And here is a listing of all 10 of my tips and tricks. Now, if there's just one that you happen to be interested in, if you check in the description below, there'll be links so you can jump ahead in the video to the topic that you're interested in. But I think you'll want to know about each and every one of these because each one will save you time and make you more efficient. Shall we dive in? Oh, yes, we shall. We are going to begin with instant history. Now I'm not actually sure that instant history is actually what Gmail calls this feature, but here's what happens. When you are in your uh, inbox, if you hover your cursor over anybody who sent you an email, you will see down at the bottom, open detail view. That's the term that they say, open detail view. This is a bit of magic. Within here, you have all of the details as far as the contact information, plus a history of your communications or the different activities that you've been involved with with that person, including things like calendar entries as well. So rather than searching through all of that past emails to try and find a communication with any individual, you can quickly navigate to a history of your conversations and activities with that person through the detail screen. We've all been there. Just as you're going through and preparing to send an email and you've promised to include an attachment, you have forgotten to include said attachment when you send the email and you hit send and you immediately have sender's remorse. We've all been there. Fortunately, Gmail gives us a grace period where we can recall that email before it's sent out into the great wilds of the interwebs and is therefore unretrievable. You have, you can set the amount of time that you have to retrieve an email before you send it within your settings. You just go into the gear icon, go into see all settings, and there you will find the details on undo send. Now you don't have a lot of options. You can uh, set a cancellation period of up to 30 seconds, which is what I would recommend. The maximum is always good. So effectively what happens is Gmail just buffers the email. In other words, they don't actually send it out until after this 30 second grace period. So take advantage of that if you happen to accidentally hit send before you were actually ready to send the email. Undo send can help mitigate a bewildering array of sending sins. We've all experienced some form of autocomplete by now, whether it's autocorrect on our smartphone, which has probably caused you, as well as it's, we know it's caused me, a myriad of embarrassments and uh, unintended consequences. Uh, but we've also seen autocomplete in things like our email addresses. You start typing a person's email address in and it autocomplete. Well, there's a related technology which is called Smart Compose. It's built into Gmail and you've probably noticed it. As you're typing a sentence, Smart Compose will complete that thought for you uh, based on, I guess, the algorithm that Google has of the most common phrases, that words that follow other words. And it can speed up your typing time quite dramatically. Now, you can turn it off if it's irritating and it bothers you, or you can actually ask it to start to recognize your own particular cadence and to learn to be even a smarter smart compose to help you write more speedily in the future. In order to control all aspects of smart control, you go into the, under the gear menu into the settings, scroll down till you find your options for smart control, and here you can turn it on or off and opt in for the customization. Templates are definitely something that you're going to want to know about if you are not using them. Email templates within Gmail are just what they sound like. They are templates that you can use to autofill documents. So what happens is while you are in the compose window within Gmail, if you go down into the three dot menu and choose templates, you can turn whatever draft you're working on, whatever email you're writing, you can turn it into a template that you can automatically insert into future emails that you're sending. So for example, I wanted to save the bio that I send out for when I'm a guest on podcasts. Now, if I need to send that to somebody in the future, I simply go down into the template menu once again, and I choose the new template which I saved, and it automatically populates that content into that email. You can use templates for technical support. You can use it for regular requests. There's a lot of different ways that you can use templates, but the key is to understand them and to use them. 
One thing is certain, templates will save you time and make you more efficient in your email. Similar to templates, but completely different, are signatures. Signatures are preloaded pieces of text, obviously the signature at the bottom of the email. And we've all known that we can create a single signature that we include in all of our emails. But you can include multiple signatures in Gmail and choose which signature you want to include in an email from the signature menu right down there at the bottom of the Gmail Compose window. Now, how you go about creating new signatures, which you might want to use for any vertical purpose, is you go Go under the gear menu into settings and scroll all the way down until you find the signature window. There within there, you can create new signatures, give it a logical name, and then you can create your own signature. It can include links, it can include graphics, you can customize it to your heart's desire and make it purpose-built for any communications that you're creating. Now, once you have finished creating the signature, you have to make sure that you scroll down to the very bottom of the screen, of the, of the settings screen, and click save, or it will not be saved. But once you have saved your new signature, then anytime you're writing an email in the future, if you want to include the custom signature for that particular communications, it's as simple as going to the bottom of the compose window and selecting the appropriate signature. Multiple signatures is one terrific Gmail tip or trick. So many of our tasks and responsibilities start out as an email that's been sent to us. So it makes perfect sense for Gmail to give us the opportunity to take any email that we have and convert it either into an event in our calendar or a task on our task manager. And Gmail does both, although it does them in different ways. Let's start with converting an email into an event, which then we'll place it on our calendar. Now, depending on how you manage your time, this might be a task that you want to accomplish if you're calendar blocking and you're putting it in and you're putting tasks on your calendar, or it could be an appointment that you're making with the people that are included in that email, in the email thread. Either way, when you go into the more menu within Gmail, you have the option to convert this email into an event. And when you do so, you're brought immediately into Google Calendar and an event has been created, which auto fills all of the information that Gmail can pull from that particular email. In what you can set a time, set the date, and then save it either as a task for you to accomplish within a calendar or as a meeting. And it'll even send uh, meeting requests out to the recipients or the senders of the email thread that you're working on. And we've quickly and effectively converted the email into a calendar event. Now, depending on how you work, you might not want the email to go into the calendar. Instead, you might want to create a task from it because that's how you manage your time. If that's the case, we go to a different location. If you look in the very top of the email, you'll see that you can send this email or convert this email into a task. And then it does very much the same thing as converting it to an event, except it brings it into Google Tasks and it automatically creates a task from that particular email. This is a great habit to get into, converting emails into calendar appointments or tasks. While we are on this topic of automatically converting things in our email into other Google assets, we can add anybody who sent us an email to our contact list by opening the email and then hovering our cursor over top of their profile picture. There, if they are not in our contacts, we'll see an add to contacts option. When we click on that, there all of the information that Gmail can pull from that particular uh, from that particular account is added to your contacts. And where do you go to find those contacts? Look underneath the waffle menu, and there you will find your contacts. And the new contact has been added to your contact directory. From time to time, an email comes in that you're just not ready to deal with. So instead of leaving it in your inbox to constantly be pushed down and further and further by new emails coming in till it's finally pushed under the horizon and you might never remember to find it again, instead what you can do is you can snooze an email that you want to deal with later so that it will re-enter your inbox at the top as a fresh email and hopefully catch your attention when you're ready to deal with it. It's really easy to set up snooze. All you do is you go under the tasks at the very top of the email window you can select snooze, determine when you want the email to come back as a fresh email into your inbox and apply that setting. This way, things that you want to put off until you're ready for won't get lost and buried down in the depths of your email, but instead will come in and be right at the top when you're ready to deal with them. 
Schedule send is a pretty powerful feature, which can actually save your, it can maybe save your reputation a little bit. Here, here's the scenario. You're working late at night on a project. And if you send the email to the person that you're working on the project with at that time of night, when you're actually there working, um, you're going to get judged. You're going to get judged either in the fact that while that person works 24 seven, they're going to be available 24 seven for me, or more likely the person's going to look at the email coming in at all ungodly hours and say, my gosh, does Steve have any life other than this? <laughs> so in order to protect your reputation and also strategically to make sure that emails land in a person's inbox at a appropriate time, which might be a time that, you know, first thing in the morning when you know you want to get their attention and you might not be available to send the email at that moment, all of those scenarios the schedule send feature works terrifically for. Just If you just click on the carrot on the side of the send button, you can then schedule an email to go out at the time that you determine. So you don't have to actually be sitting at your email in order to send it at the time that you want it sent. Instead, Gmail will take over that responsibility and send it out at a time that it's most likely to be received, at a time it's most likely to be well received at the other end or to protect <laughs> your reputation. Either way, schedule send is a terrific Gmail tip. We have reached tip number 10. And if you have stuck around for all of the tips, you're going to be glad you did because I love this tip. It can help reduce your email clutter dramatically. And that is helping you unsubscribe from newsletters or email lists that you don't necessarily want to be subscribed to. Uh, here's how it works. You take advantage of the powerful search features that are built into Gmail and Gmail's understanding of how email works. So here's the process. Type in unsubscribe in the, in your search box inside of your inbox. It will then bring up all of the emails that have the word unsubscribe in them. And that's all of the newsletters. That's all of the email lists. They all have that. Now there's no automatic way to unsubscribe from this point, but instead, if you go into any one of those emails, you'll see that Gmail has also given us the option to unsubscribe right next to the sender's email address. That unsubscribe message there doesn't come from the author of the email, but Google provides that as a shortcut for you to unsubscribe from that list. Now, depending on the con the type of email that's been sent, you'll either be taken to their website to complete the unsubscribe process, or more likely, Gmail will do the whole thing for you and give you the option at that point there to actually take the email and send it to spam, which I'm not gonna do in this particular case because this was a legitimate email that I signed up for. It's not spam at all. It's just not something that I want in the future. So using the combination of Gmail's powerful search and Gmail's intelligence looking inside of the email to recognize that there's an unsubscribe button, you can streamline the unsubscribing process dramatically. There you have it. Those are my top 10 tips. Now, I bet I missed something that you think is an outstanding Gmail tip. And if so, I'm going to ask you a favor. Go into the YouTube comments and let me know what features you love in Gmail. Maybe it'll become the subject of a future video here on Dottotech. Now, I hope you found today's video to be useful, and I do have a few favors to ask if you do. Please subscribe to our channel and give us a like and a share. Let others know about the Dotto Tech channel. And while I have your attention, I want to let you know that every week here at Dotto Tech, we do a free tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday, where we cover some aspect of content creation or productivity. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to join us for a future Webinar Wednesday. The link is right here. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.